Thanks a lot to uh, Richard, uh, Dan, and Megan, who's not here, and the whole ISOC and the PO team for uh, giving us this opportunity. Uh, everyone hear me okay in the back? So, uh, oops, John, way forward. There we go. So this panel involves uh, challenges and opportunity in deploying IPv6, DNSSEC, and other key technologies. I thought before we got started, we'd do a little audience participation, get you used to getting involved here and give our panel some assistance. So who here at least has heard of IPv6? <laughs> We're doing something right here, Richard. There we go. That's good. So second question. Who here has in some way, uh, either their organization or preferred to them, used IPv6, either on their website, got it at their home and all that? Better, not as bad as it could be, okay. That's so much DNSSEC, who's at least heard of DNSSEC? Well, that's very promising, okay, good. And, and how many of you have uh, deployed it or used it anyway? A uh, much smaller number. <laughs> Another one out there, R RPKI. Has anybody heard of RPKI? Oh, that's a good lobby. Who's actually deployed it? Well, that's good, otherwise you should be up here if there's actually <laughs> So, um, let's get started here a little bit. So today we're going to... Um, go over a little bit. I'm going to do a very quick scene setting of kind of what we hope to get into. Each panelist is then going to come up and give a, a short presentation of kind of their state. We've decided to focus again on DNSSEC and uh, IPv6 because they're two technologies that seem to be getting some degree of adoption. There's, there's a lot of disagreement on how much. Um, uh, but they do seem to be technologies that are now starting to hit the mainstream. First, I'll just give a quick introduction to my panelist here. We have uh, Joe Abley, uh, the Director of DNS Operations at ICANN and uh, fellow Canadian. Bill St. Arnaud with Green IT Consultant and uh, St. Arnaud Walker and Associates. Jacques Latour, who's the Director of IT at uh, the Canadian Air Registration Authority, the .ca registry. And John Sweeting, our uh, token American, no, our great, <laughs> a great colleague I've worked with for many years, uh, who's also the Director of Network Engineering at Time Warner Cable. So. A very quick few slides for me, and then I'm going to get into the panelists. I'm not going to talk to all the slides. I'll just kind of give an idea here of what we're talking about, and you know, a little bit about technology, and, and a little bit of where where do the new technologies come from? And, and there's a few areas. This is not meant to be perfect, and obviously, you can see we think there's a lot of overlap. But you know, it, it tends to come a lot from what's the motivation? You know, from the business standpoint, you know, business sees a revenue opportunity, and it creates a new technology. You know, an operations group might see that they have processes, or what you know, an, op, uh, an ops group. You know, we could have a new tool or a new technology that would deploy in the network or something better. Uh, you know, policy governments decide to pass legislations for the public good and all that, law enforcement, and you know, that sometimes requires technology to implement them. Research, the academics sometimes have to create technologies to do their research or research from that standpoint. And then we get a little bit into where uh, ISOC is involved, obviously, with the IETF and, you know, engineering and open standards. And we see a lot of times there, one of the motivations see there is where you do have technologies where there's a need for a technology, but there's a need for interop as well. It can't just be a standalone technology. We want to make sure his mail server talks to my mail server that, you know, this DNS technology will be able to be read. So just look at that. So the two technologies we're going to highlight, uh, one was DNSSEC, um, which has been commonly referred to, it's not my quote, rebuilding the plane while in flight. Um, and it's not a new technology. Flaws were identified that it's trying to solve as far back as 1990, uh, became more public in 95, and as you can see, there's been various attempts to in the IETF to publish it. So it's been a long, long process. Uh, in 2008, we finally got um, what looked like the, tech, the, the standard set that would make sense, and we started to see some, some actual implementations. We saw some TLD start to sign, SEECZ and .org. The root got signed uh, by Joe's team back in July of uh, 2010, and we've actually seen our first ISP Comcast that has, has some deployment at the uh, recursion level. But point being, it's, it's not it's been a very, very slow process. There's a lot of criticisms a lot of time on how slow it's been and could it have been any quicker considering there, it is trying to identify security flaws. So let's put that food for thought. IPv6 is another technology, as most of you are familiar with, as I call it, two railway tracks, but they decide to have different rail gauges, so it presents a little bit of a problem. There's no backwards compatibility, so to speak, um, which has created a lot of challenges. And again, not a new technology. There's been a lot of, uh, it's been in the news very recently, but the community's been seeing the problem that we're probably going to run as far back as 90. There was a few attempts to try and squeeze some more time back from classless, and of course, NAT, which uh, Owen here would just wish has never happened, but it's such is life. Um, we saw at the IETF the start design of IPv6 in 93. RIRs such as Aaron, uh, AP and Model have been allocating IPv6 address space since 1999. 
you know, and then we had a lot of great pre you know, press, February 2011, IANDA handed out the first slash eight, last, sorry, last slash eight. APNIC reached the end of their, uh, got down to their final slash eight and basically have stopped fulfilling requ uh, all requests in April. <coughs> and in June, we had Happy World IPv6 Day. It was a lot of uh, coverage on that. Yet, most people would still say that there, there really isn't a lot of deployment or nowhere near as much. For instance, anyone want to take a guess, at least from as far as I know, how a number of major ISP, Canadian ISPs uh, that offer IPv6 today for um, broadband, and I say that mean like DSL cable technologies. Is that is that the answer, or is that you're putting up your hand? My guess. Yes, that it, it's one, I, at least that I know. And it's, well, I have it here that's in beta. That I'm aware that tech savvy, and it's a ma from a major standpoint, there are a few smaller ones. And uh, the source of the information is at least what I've heard, so if there is another ISP that's doing it, then you, you probably should be a little more public about it or something, because I do keep my ear to the ground that. <laughs> now, to be fair, there's a lot of uh, transit providers, colo providers, and, and uh, high-speed connectivity providers that are operating in Canada, so it is possible to get IPv6 in Canada, but at least at the home or the small business, not really. So, you know, there's opportunities and challenges in the name of the, the panel, so... <coughs> You know, the opportunity with the internet is that there's no central control. There's no one technically in charge. You don't need permission to innovate. You can go any, of, you know, there's a lot of businesses here in the room. You can go innovate. You know, people are able to create World Wide Web, and, and, and things can change quite a bit. Alta Vista, when it came out. Before that, we had the old Yahoo, which was everything was, the web was basically a directory of categories. You want to go a little bit farther back, it was Gopher that we were, which you can now get on CD, apparently, the entire... You're really going back if you remember Gopher. Um, but Alta Vista was the first one to offer search that you could, or at least major one that seemed to have a scalable version where you could search. Now, of course, Alta Vista's gone the way of Google, but um, still, it, it, was a, it was a big change. But the problem becomes, there's no master upgrade plan on the internet. What do we do when we have a technology like IPv6 or DNSSEC where actors have together, there's, there's inter you know, lots of interop. And of course, the bigger problem is there's no business case. One of the things the panelists will talk about when it comes to IPv6 and DNSSEC is, well, is there a product that we can offer that allows us to solve this, or are we really going to have to take on an extra burden at you know, no, extra uh, no extra revenue to us? So that's been a big challenge. So that's kind of the, uh, what I just want to set the scene. I'm going to ask each panelist to come up quickly and just give a, a quick presentation. We're going to start with uh, Joe Adler.